Uh, hello everybody, uh, welcome back to this uh, lecture series on uh, linear systems theory. So, we still continue with our uh, lectures on, on linear algebra. So, last time what we saw uh, was about how a linear transformation is essentially defined by a matrix. So, so if I had a, a transformation uh, say let me call this uh, say A from a vector space U to another vector space V. So, this is A essentially had a matrix uh, kind of uh, structure. Okay. Now, we will uh, do a little bit on, on the structure of this matrix and if it has some more information that we can we can exploit uh, for ourselves. Okay. So, so let us let us start by building. So, let us assume that I have a matrix A which is of dimension m cross n. It could also be square, but we will just do a more general case of, of m cross n and matrices. So, we will define uh, what is known as the, as the column space, uh, the null space, the row space and also the left null space or, or the kernel of the transpose. And what this mean are, are possibly clear uh, by their name, but we will do, do a bit of uh, the details. Uh, so, based on, on which of these are, uh, do they belong to the set 1, 2, 3 or 4, they can either be of, of uh, dimension R m or, or dimension R n. Right. Okay. And for, for n cross n, uh, it is a little uh, bit simpler, Every, everybody will belong, uh, so all these fundamental subspaces will be subsets of or, or subspaces of, of R n. Okay. So, first about, about the column space. So, as the name suggests, it is a vector subspace spanned by the columns of uh, the matrix, right? And C of A is then a vector space with the columns of A as its uh, basis. And if you look at it carefully, this also has close connection with the uh, definition of the image of uh, a linear map. So, what do this mean? So, uh, if I have an, an M cross N matrix, the column space comprises all vectors C equal to A x. Well, first such that C of A, which is the column space, is the span of all these columns of, of A. So, this is the, the first column of A, second column of A until you have uh, M cos, N, N columns. So, you have a M cross N matrix. Uh, alternatively, C of A is all the vectors C which satisfies C equal to A x for all x coming from R n. So, your map again is from, uh, so this, this map uh, if I look at A is from R n to R m. Okay. Now, this C of A so, if I just take uh, say the C uh, of A uh, gives me elements in the space M, right? So, in, in the space R M and therefore, C of A is a subspace of R M and right? because you are looking at C of A means, so I am already over, over here. Okay? And the dimension of this C of A is at most the minimum of this uh, either M or, or N. So, uh, so that, that depends really if, if you know, uh, if m is greater than n or if m is less than n or, or so on. So, let us say I take, uh, take a, a matrix which is say 4 uh, cross 5. So, this will have 5 rows, right. So, I have A C 1, A C 2, A C 3, A C 4, A C 5, right. So, these 5 vectors at most I can have vectors which are 4, which are 4 vectors which are independent of each other. So, whenever I have a dimension this way, there will always be the fifth vector uh, which I can write as a combination of the, of the other 4. So, at most I can have 4 independent uh, column vectors. Right? So, the, so, similarly even if I have a 5 uh, cross 4 matrix, right? so I will have uh, A C 1 till A C 4. So, at best I can still have 4 uh, independent uh, column vectors. I can have 3, 2, 1 and nothing also if it is just the 0 matrix. Okay. So, similarly, the null space is the vector space generated by the set of vectors 
x such that a x equal to 0, very similar to, to the definition of a kernel. So, I am looking at all x such that a x is equal to 0, right. So, if I take the, the all, all of this x, then it will be a subspace of R n because I am just looking at these x's. Whereas, uh, in, in the previous case, I was looking at, at uh, c, which is actually a of x or a times x, which belongs to the, to the range space and this belongs to the, the, the domain. Okay. So, uh, like look, what does this mean like practically? So, so n a consists of all the vectors, say maybe I, I can start with some vectors here which just under this transformation a just go to the 0 element here or they, they just lose their identity or you know they, they are vectors of, of dimension uh, 0, right. So, that is about the, the column space of a or C of A or the null space of a transformation which is denoted by the, uh, the matrix A. Similarly, I can also define what is a row space. Now, it should be kind of kind of obvious by what we uh, by what we defined earlier, right. So, so, the R of A consists of all possible linear combinations of rows of A. Okay, so, if I if I look at the matrix representation again starting from uh, n m cross n matrix, the row space comprises all the vectors. So, because so, so if I just have these rows right, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on uh, up to m number of rows, I am just looking at the span of all this uh, of this uh, of these row vectors. So, I just look at the transpose because usually I talk of when I talk of a basis vector, I usually talk in terms of, uh, of, the, of the columns. So, I just look at the, uh, the row vectors and the span of it, or essentially the, the transpose of the row vectors or, or in, in, in other words, this can also be considered as C of A transpose is the same as R of A, right. Okay. So, what is R of A now? R of A will be uh, now a subspace of, of R n because, because of this, right. So, so, what is R of A? All R's such that A transpose of Y will be equal to R. So, if A is of dimension m cross n, then I am looking at A transpose of dimension n cross m and therefore, the range space is now a subspace of, of R n. Right. And this can also as I said earlier can also be considered as the image or the range of the A transpose. Okay. Now, the last definition in this set is, is the left null space. So, well again as, as, as the name suggests, so, so the right null space if I just look at I am looking at A times x equal to 0. Right. So, here I am looking at A transpose of y equal to 0. So, the null space of A transpose is all y which come from R m such that A transpose of y equal to 0. Again, so these y's are in R m therefore, the entire set if I, if I construct it will be a subspace of R m, right. So, alternatively uh, loosely speaking this contains of all the vectors that lose their identity when mapped from R m to R n via A transpose. So, so just if, if, uh, if A is a mapping so, this is uh, an, an m cross uh, m cross n going from R n to R m, then A transpose would simply be a map from R of m to R n. Okay. So, this is pretty, pretty basic, right? just, just uh, the definitions that we will follow. Okay. So, what do we do if, once we define this? Right? So, first definition or something that will be useful to us is the rank of a linear map. A rank of a linear map f which goes from u to v with a corresponding metric representation which is a which is of, of, of dimension m cross n. Uh, so, the dimension of, 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 the, uh, of the image of f or the rank of f is, sim is simply the dimension of the image of f. It is again comes from some you know some basic definitions uh, over over here right? coming again from the, the column space uh, till the image and, and so on. Okay. So, the first definition is 
the dimension of the image of f or the rank of f is simply the uh, given by the, the, the dimension of the image of f. Similarly, for column space I can just write that the rank of A is the dimension of the uh, column space of A. Uh, similarly, I can write for the dimension of the row space of A is also the rank of A which is dimension of R of A. So, just to, to, to summarize I have the rank of a map. So, this is my map say this is equal to R this is also equal to the rank of the corresponding matrix A. This will also equal the dimension of the column space or also the dimension of column of, of the row space and at best it can be of dimension uh, m, m, n. I think you can just write down a little example or, or, or the little details but these are, these are pretty, pretty straightforward. Right? Okay. Now, what does the rank of A give me? Rank of A gives me the number of linearly independent columns or number of independent rows of A. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, just to to uh, to summarize, right? So, if uh, so, or just to carry forward of those definitions, uh, a matrix of full rank is of full rank if the rank of A is the minimum of m percent. So, if if say I just take a a four cross 5 matrix, if the rank of A is 4, then I say it is its full rank. If it is 3 or 2 or whatever, then it is rank deficient. Uh, that is what the next statement says. Uh, this is again straightforward to verify that the rank of A is the rank of A transpose. Uh, nothing really to, to work out here, but you can just substitute here and check, check for yourself. Uh, lastly, a uh, 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 n cross n square matrix is invertible if it is of full rank. We would have learned this in some form or the other in one of our earlier uh, courses. And lastly, an interesting property is if I take two matrices and multiply them by each other of A times B, the rank of it is the minimum of the rank of A and the rank of B. Okay, so let's let's quickly do a bit of a proof uh, for this. So let me take a matrix A and a matrix B. Right, so each matrix will have a set of its 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 rows and columns and rows and columns and so on. So I can write this as A with say let's see B B's are this the columns of B's can be written this way. So this will give me A B C one two so on till n. Okay. Now, if I take an element here or, or this or, or any one of this, so each A multiplied with some ith column of B will be some kind of a linear combination of columns of A. Right, I, I, I think that should be should be easy easy to check, and therefore every column of A B this is each every column this 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 is a linear combination of. of A. Now, if you follow the basic definitions, the column space of A times B will follow this. And this implies, if I look at the rank of A times B, will be at first less than or equal to the rank of A. Okay. Now, again I, I, I come back to this and say well, uh, okay, let me erase a part of this. So, again let me look at the product A times B right? and then every row of A 
times b is a linear combination of rows of b right and then following similar arguments as as before i can get this inequality here which implies that rank of a b is less than or equal to rank of p and therefore the, the result follows right combining this expression and this expression that that if i have two transformations uh, with their matrix representation as a and b the product of the rank is the minimum of rank of a or and the, the rank of of b okay now what is the uh, nullity of uh, of a matrix so we we spend some time looking at what is the rank of a map or the rank of a, of a matrix which is a equivalent representation of a linear map okay so the nullity of map f which again goes from u to v with a ma matrix representation of a of certain dimension m cross n is a dimension of kernel of f okay so again this is not really difficult to check that the nullity of f is the nullity of a is okay by definition the, the dimension of kernel or the dimension of the, the nullity of a so nullity is zero if and only if the null space contains only the zero vector right? the zero vector here maps to the zero vector there nothing else maps to the zero vector on the other side right and of course so so if if you remember some of our undergrad training on matrix algebra you can say the rank and the nullity of a matrix can be determined from its uh, row echelon form so later if we get some time we will spend some time re revisiting those of how to derive uh, the echelon form given uh, a certain matrix maybe during a, a tutorial class okay so so just to to brief uh, before that i think uh, so uh, so the definition or, or how a echelon form goes is when it satisfies the the following conditions right that the first non zero element in each row uh, called the leading entry is one let's say so one here a one here a one here and a one here okay so the the second rule says that each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row so Uh, for example i have a, a one here so the next one can occur only in the second row and if there is a third one it can only occur here and then nowhere else it can occur maybe here or or, or nowhere else not here or not here so of course we'll we'll leave the derivations for for uh, uh, for later but okay what do we do with this form uh, so the rank of a matrix is equal to the number of non zero rows in its uh, in this echelon form okay so this uh, leads us to one of the fundamental theorems that that we will require through the course of in 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 into deriving concepts on on controllability or or observability so what does the theorem say so given a, a linear map f which goes from u to v with a corresponding matrix representation a as always the rank of f plus the nullity of f is the dimension of u or the rank of a plus the nullity of a is the is equal to n so what is the dimension so if i so in this case uh, u is rn v is rm and i have a map f which has a matrix representation of a so rank of f plus nullity of f is has the dimension n okay now we'll just quickly do a, a sketch uh, of the proof okay so i can start from f going from u to v uh, with dimension of u is n dimension of v is n okay now let's assume for simplicity that the dimension of 
the kernel of f is some number k. It could be zero also, right? So that doesn't so k uh, which will be less than or equal to n. Okay, and let's say that the difference is such that k plus r equal to n, or we define the quantity r which is n minus k, which can also be zero, or any value between uh, zero and n. Okay, now what I know is that the kernel of f is a subspace of R n because the kernel is defined here in in, uh, in in u. Okay. Now, if this is a subspace, it will have a certain basis, basis of dimension k. So, let I will call that say let us say E 1 till E k be the basis for kernel of this map f. Okay. Now, this u is an n is an n dimensional space. So, let us say that the total basis of that would be E 1 till E k e k plus 1 till e n and this is a basis for u. Now, what is to be proven here is if that if this is the basis for the kernel that the remaining is a basis for the image of f right. So, we have to prove f e k plus 1 f e n is a basis for the image of f because okay why why am i doing this f because i'm when i'm talking of image i'm already in this in in, in rm i'm already in in this subspace v right so so, what, what is to be proven now is that f of e k plus 1 till f of e n is a basis for the image uh, of, of, of f. Okay. So, just assume that for some x in u, there is a corresponding y in v such that f of x is equal to y. Now, x can be written as some coefficient c 1 e 1 plus c n e n, right. So, because e 1 till e n are the basis for u and x will have some of its own coefficients or, or its uh, or its or its coordinates. So this will also include C1, E1 plus C K E K plus C K uh, plus one uh, E K plus one till C N E N, where N N was K plus R, where K we called as the dimension of kernel of f. Okay. Now, y is equal to f of x. right? Now, how will this numbers or this vector transform under f? Well, this is f, this entire thing is c 1 e 1 c k e k plus all the way till c n e n. Okay. I will just expand it. Uh, since uh, this is a linear transformation, I can write. So, similar to what we did yesterday in, in, in change of basis, uh, f e 1 c 
k f e k plus c k plus 1 f e k plus 1 plus c n f e n. Okay, now what do we know about f with e 1 till e k? So, the assumption we made was that let e 1 till e k be the basis for the kernel of f, right. So, so this all numbers here will disappear, right? they will just be 0 because all these appear in the kernel of f from, from e 1 till, till e k. So, what we are left with is c k plus 1 f e k plus 1 plus c n f e n. So, here I am just looking at the image of, of this vector x. Okay, now, what is to be shown is that That this f e k plus 1 till f e n that this vectors they span the image of f right. So, so, so we also in, in, in a way uh, have to ensure that uh, that they are not linearly independent, right? So to to preserve the the dimension. So let's let's assume for a moment that they are actually linearly independent, right? Which means that uh, so this this vector representation C k plus one f e k plus one all the way till C n f e n is actually equal to zero. Okay, now, since f is linear, I can write this as f c k plus 1 with the with e k plus 1 which are the basis vectors c n e n is also equal to 0. Right? Now, going by the definition of the kernel, this would suggest that this particular vector is an element of the kernel of f. Okay. Now, what do we know about elements of kernel of f from starting from the definition when from 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 over here that well they can any any element can be written in terms of its basis e 1 till e k. Now, I, I claim that they I can also write it in in terms of e k plus 1 till e n, which means that there is some kind of a linear dependence between e 1 till e k and e k plus 1 till e n. Okay. Now, what are this e 1 till e k, e k plus 1 till e n? So, these are, this were the basis for r n which means that this actually is, is a contradiction that I can I cannot write it in, in this way, right. So, e 1 till e k, e k plus 1 till e n are actually linearly are actually linearly independent. Right, and therefore, this assumption that well, can I write uh, uh, assuming uh, that this vector can equate to zero is is a contradiction because e one till e all this e one till e n are the basis of of u or basis of R n, and thus supposed to be linearly independent. So, what we can say is that this can never be zero. Right. And therefore, f e k plus 1 till f 
E n are linearly independent right and thus form a basis for the image of f right and therefore the dimension of this image of f is r which proves the claim of the theorem right so that that the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of image is n where n is the number of columns of the the e matrix so as as a as a corollary if i look at in terms of uh, the matrix a transpose then well it's it's obvious now to verify that the rank of a transpose plus the nullity of a transpose would be m where m is now the number of columns in uh, in the a matrix as a summary uh, so if i have uh, again a matrix a of dimension m cross n the column space is a subspace of rm the null space is a subspace of rn row space is a subspace of rn the left null space is a subset of of rm so the column space of a would be of dimension r and uh, n minus r so together they will give me the dimension n similarly here i am looking at a transpose so r and m minus r would give me m i just just to to summarize what we have so far okay uh, so the last uh, theorem that we will do in this uh, in this module is uh, something that relates uh, sorry something that relates the null space to the to the row space and the null space of a transpose to the the column space okay so first let's uh, quickly see what this uh, this this uh, symbol is so this symbol is uh, usually called as the orthogonal complement okay so mathematically what it means uh, so so given a vector space v so its orthogonal complement would be all x so so this v is a subspace of rn so v perp as they call it is all x in rn such that x transpose times z equal to 0 for all z belonging to v okay so so the orthogonal complement v perp of v of a linear uh, v is a linear subspace of rn is the set of all vectors x which are orthogonal to every vector in v mathematically it just means uh, means this right that x transpose of z equal to 0 where x is uh, in the perp and z comes uh, from v okay now let's, let's see the proof of this uh, so i just write it a little little different uh, so so these two statements can be equivalently written as the image of a is the kernel of a transpose with the orthogonal complement similarly kernel of a is the image of a transpose with the orthogonal complement okay so this this equality should should be okay right between these two statements and these two okay so we'll just prove uh, prove one of this so let's assume that there is a vector x belonging to the image of w so which means that x is in image sorry not w so okay there it is okay assume that x belongs to the image 
of A, this means X in image of A implies there exists some vector eta which is such that this x comes as a multiplied with this eta. Similarly, if I take a vector z which comes from the kernel of a transpose, this would mean that a transpose times z equal to 0. Now, look at these two combined. So, if I take z transpose and multiply it with x, I get the following right. So, I have z transpose a times eta ok. Now, this is also necessarily equal to 0 because, because of this a transpose z equal to 0 which will also mean that z transpose of a is also equal to 0 ok. So, what does it mean right. So, x this vector is orthogonal to every vector in the kernel of A transpose. Okay. So, so, we have not proved yet right. So, what this actually means that x is orthogonal to every vector in, in, in the kernel of A transpose which mathematically uh, which means that x belongs to the kernel of A transpose with the orthogonal complement right. So, x is orthogonal to every vector in kernel of A transpose which means x belongs to, to this space here right. Now, where does x come from? x is the image of a. So, therefore, if I take all the set of all this x, I can only say that, okay, let me write it in a box here, that this image of uh, the image of a is a subspace of the kernel of a transpose with the orthogonal complement. That is all I can say. I, I still cannot prove the equality. Okay. So, to prove equality, we will in, invoke the, the rank nullity, nullity theorem which we had seen in the, in the previous slides. Okay. So, what we know so far is that the image of A is satisfies this. The kernel of A transpose with the orthogonal complement. Okay. Now, to show that these are actually equal, uh, we need uh, uh, a couple of more steps. So, first thing we know from the rank nullity theorem is that dimension of kernel of A transpose plus dimension of the image of A transpose is m because A here is a uh, m cross n matrix and a transpose will be n cross m. So, the, the dimension is the number of, of, of columns. Okay. Uh, second thing that is uh, if you are writing the first time uh, and is easy to, to, to uh, intuitively it should be clear. right? So, dimension of kernel of a transpose plus dimension of the kernel of a transpose with its orthogonal complement is also equal to m. Say like m, m equal to 2 uh, if, the, if, if uh, the kernel of A transpose looks like 1 0 then this orthogonal complement will necessarily be 0 1 and hence the total dimension is, is like 2. Uh, similarly, if, if, uh, if I have uh, kernel of A transpose in a 3 dimensional space looks like this then it is its perp or its orthogonal complement will have either 0 1 0 or 0 0 1 or any linear combinations of these two. I can just swap these two and say if this is the kernel of uh, A transpose then this, this will be uh, in its orthogonal complement. So, this is this is like intuitively clear. So, from these two things what we can conclude is the following that the dimension of image of A is also the rank 
of A is also equal to the dimension of image of A transpose. This is also equal to the dimension of the kernel of A transpose with the perp. Right. So, so what I want, so what I know so far is is these two, that the image of A is a subspace of the orthogonal complement of the kernel of A transpose, and additionally, what I know is that these two spaces are such that the dimensions are equal. Right. And this is possible if and only if there is a strict e equality between the image of A and the kernel of A transpose with its perp. Okay, that's a, that's that's a one one part of the proof, and the second part of the proof uh, is 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 kind of straightforward from this. Uh, as as a little uh, simple example, so let's uh, take a matrix A, which looks like this. Uh, it says one zero 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 zero. Okay, so the null space of A would be well, the the span of these two vectors 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 or any, any linear combination of, uh, of these two elements. The null space of A transpose would look like uh, 0 and 1. Okay? So, so, so what it means is that you take A, uh, this this uh, 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 this uh, matrix A and multiply it by n of A, then you get a zero. Similarly, with the A, a transpose, where where A transpose looks uh, something like this: one zero 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 zero. You may as since they are zero, you may as well get rid of this row, and then if you uh, so you can easily check that uh, this is is the is the null space of uh, of A transpose. Okay. Similarly, the column space C of A is the line which passes through 1, 0 okay. and the row space is also a line which passes through 1, 0, 0 or 1, 0, 0 transpose. Okay. Now, if you go back to the theorem statement, it says that N of A is in the orthogonal complement of R of A. Right? You take an element from N of A and that it will essentially be uh, in, in, its, in, in the orthogonal complement of R of A prime. So, so, this is R of A, take any element from here from N of A, say take uh, uh, say 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. I get zero. Similarly, with the second element also, right? So, so the definition here is uh, is that uh, x transpose of z should be zero. Another important thing or interesting thing to note here is that I take the perp and I take the perp again, I, I get back my original space. Similarly, you can verify this also, right? That the null space of A transpose is in the orthogonal complement of of C A, right? So, take this and multiply uh, zero one from here and one zero from here will give you 0. Right? So, so, this the relation between these two holes and the relation between these two holes. So, that is a little uh, illustration of, of, uh, of, uh, of a theorem uh, which, which says uh, the following. Okay, so, how do we uh, visualize these four uh, fundamental subspaces? So, we have the, the row space of A, the column space of A, the null space of A and the null space of uh, A transpose. Okay, so, uh, what do we have as the relations? We know uh, the following that, uh, well the dimension of the row space is R, it is a subspace of R n. Okay, so, row space, it is a subspace of R n, it is of dimension R. Then I go to the null space of A, which is also a subspace of R n and of dimension n minus R. Okay, so, this is the null space of dimension n minus r and together the row space of A or the dimension of the row space of A plus the dimension of the null space of A is, is R n. These are the, the fundamental theorems uh, which we uh, had had earlier. Right? So, so, this one the rank of A plus nullity of A is, is equal to n. Okay, now, similarly, I have the column space of A 
which is a subspace of Rm, I can denote it as uh, the column space of A of dimension R is a subspace of Rm and similarly the null space of, uh, of A transpose is a subspace of Rm now and it is a of, of dimension M minus R. Right, so this 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 is where this sits. Okay, now uh, so so if so what does what does this mean? So the, the null space of A means the following. So if I take a vector x n which belongs to the null space of A, the uh, map A will take it to the origin. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, x r via this transformation A will go uh, into the column space uh, uh, of of A of dimension r and so on. So, what we also know is the following that the null space of A and the row space of A are orthogonal to each other. Okay? Then the, the null space of A and the row space of A are or orthogonal subspaces to each other and together they will again be of dimension n. Similarly, with the uh, null space of A transpose and the column space of A are ortho also uh, orthogonal uh, to each other. So, th this the dimension of the of this plus this would be uh, would be m. So that's a little little pictorial uh, pictorial representation of this. Uh, and also, for what does this uh, this map show us? So if I take uh, 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 an element x r from the row space and element x n from the null space, it will still map uh, to here. So which essentially means that a times x n is is zero. So this is rewriting these two equations uh, together. Okay. So so that's a little little visualization of of uh, the the fundamental subspaces uh, given a matrix representation of a transformation uh, f, uh, which is uh, essentially of, uh, of, of dimension m cross n. Okay. So, uh, what we did here is uh, in this in this lecture or uh, is to define fundamental subspaces of a matrix. Uh, we had the concepts of rank and nullity of a matrix. Uh, we, uh, we did a proof of the rank nullity theorem and also the fundamental uh, theorem of linear algebra together with its uh, uh, geometric uh, visualization. Uh, so, the next module we will talk of uh, change of basis, we will do lots of uh, things on properties of matrices, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, we also look at uh, invariant transformation subspaces and also end with similarity transformation and how we and how these uh, transformations will uh, make matrix computations a little easy further. So, that is coming up in, in, in module 3 or the lectures of, of week 3. Thank you.